<sighs> the garden is so productive. Cut. Today I'm going to make a leek and onion quiche or a leek and onion pie and um, using the shawcross pastry that we saw being made in a previous video. First we cut off the root. I've done that outside because it's very messy. We want to come down the plant so that we have some green and this is what we will use to make the quiche later. So I want to split the leek along its length. Um, it's easier if you pull the leek. So um, I will rinse these and then chop them and we're ready to go. So we slice them and just pop them into the bowl. To make a leek and onion quiche, we need the prepared leeks. We need an onion, which we will slice and dice. We need thyme, the herb thyme, um, and we just pick the leaves, or if we have dried thyme, just crumple it up and put it into the mix. Butter. And we also need salt and pepper. In addition to these ingredients, we also need a chopping board, a sharp knife, and a frying pan to prepare the leeks and onions. The butter has melted, and so we can add the onion. Allow the onion to cook gently for, let's say, five minutes. I've just chopped the uh, leaves from the, of the thyme that I picked earlier. We will add the thyme to the onions and some, a little grind of pepper at this stage and some salt. And then we add the leek. And we mix this together and then put the heat back on, this time a little bit higher. And we let this come together for about 12 minutes. You need to watch this and stir it maybe two times in this time. In the meantime, we should preheat the oven to prepare for baking the quiche. So we preheat the oven to approximately 155, 160 degrees in a fan oven. While the onion and leek are sweating in the frying pan, we can prepare the base of the quiche. To bake the base, we take some butter and we spread it into onto the baking tin. It's best to have a baking tin with a removable base as this allows us to remove the quiche later. I've greased the pastry tin and I can set this aside. And now I will roll out the pastry. First, as you can see, I have already dusted the surface with the flour. And now I take the pastry. Of course, this is far too much pastry. So I take approximately 300 grams of this form it into a ball. Remember to roll your rolling pin in some flour as this helps to prevent the rolling pin sticking to the pastry. And then gently roll in one direction. When rolling pastry, we turn the pastry and not the person. So turn one quarter, roll again, turn, roll again. So basically you just keep rolling until it's enough for your pie dish. This pie dish is very large. I think it's 30 centimeters at the base. Um, I mean, that's enough for a family of 10, I think, probably. Um, and even in Ireland, those families are now quite rare. However, it can be enough for a family of two if you really like leek and onion quiche. 
So to lift the pastry, simply roll it along the rolling pin, bring your tin to the correct place, and roll it back out gently, not pressing on the sides. If you press on the sides, you will cut. Here you can see I've misjudged the width of the pastry, and rather than pull the pastry across, it's best to simply wrap it back onto the rolling pin very carefully to avoid breakage and to lift it and move it so that you've covered the edges best. So this is, you know, and now take a piece of pastry, make a ball, and use this to press the pastry into the base. By doing so, it helps prevent breaking through the pastry. It's also useful, especially at the early stages, to keep some pastry like this back for repair work after the blind baking. And now, we will line this, leave the edges like this, they're fine. So before lining it with baking paper, we want to prick the base with some fork, with a fork, including the sides. However, we don't want to attack the pastry. We just hold it very lightly in our hands and tap. So lightly prick the base of the tin and use something. You can use dried peas, dried beans, rice. Uh, these are ceramic peas for, um, for pastry baking. Whatever you use, you need to put it into paper because picking rice or picking stones out of the pastry later isn't fun. So the oven has now preheated and we can put this into the oven for 15 minutes to bake blind. While the base is baking in the oven, uh, we can prepare the remainder of the filling. So we have cheese, some milk, 150 mils of milk, some cream, the same amount of cream, approximately 300 altogether, four eggs, these are large eggs, three to four large eggs, salt and pepper. The cheese is a mixture of cheddar and um, you can use Gruyere, um, that's the classic cheese to use in a quiche. And you can grate it or you can cut it into small cubes like this. I have cut the cheese and this is ready to go um, in a few minutes. And now I want to mix together the cream and the milk And I want to add to this four eggs. And first I add them like this. These are free range eggs from a neighbor. And sometimes you find an egg that's more than a day old or two days old or a week old or a year old. And so it's best to break the egg separately into a separate cup and that way if there's a problem with the egg you don't have to throw everything away normally if you buy eggs in a supermarket this isn't really a problem um, so we can it is of course better to first beat the eggs together and then add the milk and cream And the last egg, we want to only add the egg yolk for now. Um, because we will use the egg white later to seal the base of the quiche. Takes years. 
add pepper. I normally add salt to the cheese. Um, and in my head, this just makes the egg less hard. Again, that just could be in my head, yeah. By now, the pastry base has been in the oven for a little over 15 minutes. And I... By using baking parchment, the paper is not so hot. So we can just lift it off. This is not fully baked yet. And as you can see, it's not brown. So we want to paint it with the egg white we reserved earlier. And this will form a layer of egg white over the quiche. I forget the sides, which I almost did because of my new status as a video star. and back in the oven for six to ten minutes. Yeah. So the base has been in the oven now for a further five or six minutes and so it's time to remove it and fill it. And as you can see the egg has set and this will make a, a seal like nail varnish on the bottom of the of the pie and we take some of the cheese and we sprinkle it liberally so very generously around the base again this will melt onto the bottom and it all helps to flavor the quiche and then add some of the mix approximately half. Spread this around, like so, and then add the remainder of the cheese. And for a quiche this size, we need to make pastry with 300 grams of flour. And now we want to not quite fill the base with the cream and egg mix. Often if you add a lot of egg, this quiche can't set. So what I do is I add some. I just want it coming up, visible on the side. It'll take a tip more, but not everything. And then this goes into the oven for 35 to maybe 40 minutes, but not longer than 40 minutes. The quiche is now ready. So, and we can test by lightly touching and it's, it should be a little bit springy and soft, squidgy really here. And so, here you have it, a leek and onion quiche. Good morning and it's the next day and we've already eaten the quiche but if you want to find the recipe just click on the description below this video.